Today, we're going to explore the origin story of one of Duckburg's greatest superheroes, Gizmo Duck. We'll see how the ordinary duck, Fenton Crackshell, could become a guardian of all that is good within his home. Hello, fun people. I'm Isaac Carlson, and I'm focused on spreading magic by discussing Disney. So if you are new here and you'd like to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. Now, Gizmo Duck made his debut in the world of DuckTales on March 26th, 1989 with a TV movie that would eventually be broken up into five episodes titled Super DuckTales. Introducing this story to the world was none other than former Disney CEO Michael Eisner, Scrooge, Launchpad, and the boys on a ride down Splash Mountain in Disneyland, clearly showing that this was going to be a fantastic adventure. As someone who watches a lot of Disney Parks documentaries on YouTube, anytime I can find old footage of Michael Eisner, I really feel like a true Disney YouTuber. In Super DuckTales, we are shown that Fenton Crackshell began his journey to become a superhero as a duck who was waiting in the wings, and this would carry on with his character through all current iterations. In both DuckTales series, he's attempting to get a hold on his life and to make an impact in the world. The encounter has got to be the most boring shot in the world! Don't you hate it, Carter? Originally, he was literally just a bean counter before he was hired as Scrooge McDuck's accountant, while more recently we saw him as a struggling scientist intern for Gyro Gearloose, who, might I add, was not the most supportive boss. Dr. Gearloose says this is the perfect place for my work. I'm just now realizing that remark may not have been entirely complimentary. No matter! Gyro had a lot of baggage from being an intern in his youth, meaning he was not too willing to acknowledge the hard work, intelligence, and optimism of Fenton. While Mr. Crackshell was originally envisioned as merely a fantastic counter, more recently he's been depicted as a brilliant scientist who was shown to be clamoring for an opportunity to be able to assist people with his ideas and his actions. I have so many ideas but I tried too hard hoping at least one of them will stand out. I just want to help people, you know? Oh, and Fenton lives with his soap opera loving mother, so needless to say, he was ready to grow beyond what he was. Not that there's anything wrong with soap operas or loving your mother. I love my mother very much. Too bad your father didn't see this. <laughs> he thought I was worthless. Fenton just needed his chance to shine, and that came when he finally was able to put on the gizmo suit. Dr. Gearloose is working on an innovation that will better all of mankind, both literally and figuratively. Behold! Originally built under Scrooge McDuck's direct orders for Gyro to create a bodyguard for him that had a brain after the last few inventions he had built became evil, you know, classic things that happen when you're doing science, the gizmo suit was put on by Crackshell when he felt there was no other option to save the day. In the original DuckTales, Fenton dons the suit when he struggles to get back Scrooge's number one dime from the Beagle Boys. In the reboot, it's when Mark Beaks lets loose an unrestrained evil little helper that brings Fenton to unlock the suit that was constructed under the project name Blatherskite. Operating passcode, blathering Blatherskite! Anything happened? Whoa! I am Gizmo Duck. With the suit linking with his body for the first time ever, he had the abilities and the means to save others, which allows him to save Scrooge, the boys in Launchpad, and begin the work needed to master the suit. Scrooge is always complaining, my inventions are dangerous, this armor's gotta be 100% idiot proof, and well, you're just the idiot to prove it. Oh, thank you, sir. To get Scrooge's approval in his original origin story, it's when he returns the dime to Mr. McDuck's money bin that allows Fenton to prove himself under his new public persona, which he provides to the world after learning that Scrooge did not respect him very much. What last, an employee who doesn't goof up like that feeble-headed Fenton. <gasps> By the way, what's your name? Just call me Gizmo Duck. With the alias of Gizmo Duck, Fenton fights off the overprotective gyro invention GICU2 so that he could return the number one dime to Scrooge's money bin. And with those acts, Scrooge determined that whoever that duck was behind the mask, he deserved to wear the suit and be his official bodyguard. But we see in both stories, there's still a learning curve to mastering the suit and being a protector. Even after he gets to work with Gyro to understand the suit more, 
Fenton doesn't get to start changing Duckburg and helping people as quickly as he would have liked. I mean, yeah, it's great to understand how everything works, but with a practically invincible robotic exoskeleton, I can understand why he'd want to be out in the streets actually saving people. Don't you think we could be doing more than just these reflex tests? Are you asking for a lunch break? We see in the reboot that there was a limiting problem, though, at the time. You see, Gyro's microchip within the Gizmo Duck computer couldn't handle all of the tasks that Fenton wanted to put it through. So with Gyro's lack of faith in the suit established, the intern was driven away into the arms of Mark Beeks. With the belief Fenton could save more lives with Beeks, he sides with him until Gizmo Duck sees that Beeks was only trying to monetize the hero status that he had been building. Even without the suit though, we see how Fenton continues to fight for justice in the people when he goes after Beeks, takes back the suit, and announces his name. I have Gizmo Dog! With a little help from Huey, the Gizmo suit is rewired to be controlled solely through Fenton's brain, allowing the full capabilities of the robotic armor to be unlocked. And in a really cool sequence, we see Fenton becomes one with the suit. Kind of reminds me of like an Avatar or Code Lyoko moment. The suit is not Gizmo Duck. You are. It's all me. I'm in control. But unfortunately, taking control of the suit entirely also meant that he had the full responsibilities of it self-destructing on his shoulders. So he flew away over the water to save the civilians around him, which got him pretty injured, but also showed his worth to Scrooge McDuck. I would always be here for Duckburg. I need someone to make sure this place is still standing when I get back. Looking good, lad. You work for me now. With that action by Scrooge, Fenton wasn't an unpaid intern, but was a higher protector of the city. Now he had control over the new suit that was made for him and the ability to save anyone who needed him. And that same privilege was given to Fenton when he saved the world from aliens in Super DuckTales. Even though Gizmo Duck had shown the world his noble soul and Scrooge believed in him, for Gizmo Duck to be hired by Scrooge with his secret identity revealed, though, in the original story that took an alien invasion. Sometimes it takes a lot of force for truths to come out. When extraterrestrials raided Scrooge's money bin for its metal, Fenton is stripped of the gizmo suit in front of Mr. McDuck and is forced to tell Scrooge the truth. But even though Scrooge did not believe in him any longer now that he knew who was underneath the suit, Fenton was confident he could still prove himself. But I'm Gizmo Duck. He just sent a crack shell with aluminum siding. If you can count on him then, why can't you count on me now? With that determination, Fenton outsmarts the aliens, takes back the gizmo suit, and retrieves Scrooge's money, and shows McDuck that he is the right person to be Gizmo Duck. You've proven that it takes more than a suit of armor to make a hero. In the reboot, with this work as a superhero though, we definitely see that type of burden weigh on him, and does pull him away from his scientific research and personal life while his reputation as a conqueror of villainy is truly established. Eventually he does open up again to love and his research, and while he gets burned in the process, he accepts that type of pain is part of putting himself out there, and that sometimes he needs to focus on himself and the science that calls him. Doing here. Shouldn't you be gizmo ducking around out there? Not today. I'm needed here. Scientist at work. Fenton knew many looked to Gizmo Duck in Duckburg for protection, but there was also ways for an intern like Mr. Crackshell to help as well. And he gets the recognition for those contributions through his work with a little robot who could destroy Tokyo, known as Tubio, or better known as Boyd. Boyd was a creation by Gyro from his youth and was the first invention that he had ever made that became evil. So when Huey brings that robot to Gyro and Fenton, they work as a team to figure out how to handle the little machine. Gizmo Duck, of course, appears to defend civilians from Boyd when he becomes a dangerous threat, but by Gyro looking into Boyd's memory and confronting his old mentor, Dr. Akita, Gyro sees that maybe he should be attempting to assist in Fenton's development as a scientist more. If I had someone to actually listen to me, I might not have been so hopeless. So, you're hired full time, Dr. Crackshell Corbera. That's not technically how doctorates work, and I don't care. 
After protecting Tokyo and restoring Boyd to who he truly was, Fenton had everything now to make the impact that he wanted. He was employed by Scrooge McDuck to assist in his empire and protect Duckburg. This ordinary duck would fight in the Shadow War, rise up against the Moonvasion, and will surely fight against Fowl, for he was a hero who would continue to defend Earth till his final breath. Fenton Crackshell had proven that he was the noble, brave, and pure-hearted Gizmo Duck. But what do you think? of Gizmo Duck. Is he better than Darkwing Duck? Let me know your thoughts below the like button. Be sure to subscribe and to click the beautiful bell if you're new, and then click on another video on the screen or in the description. Thanks for watching, and have a magical day.